and welcome to the 17th episode of The Hawk's Nest. I'm Reagan. And I'm Abby. We have a lot going on this week. First of all, big congratulations to the senior flute players, Whitney Moody and Clara Streck, for finishing 7th and 11th at the ATSSB Area Band auditions on January 8th. This puts them in the top 10% of all band students in the state. Good job, you guys. This week, our seniors hit yet another milestone on the road to graduation when they took their cap and gown senior pictures for yearbook. The seniors seem to have mixed feelings about this, with some finding these senior rites of passage a little sad and others just eager to get them done so they can move on to the next chapter in their lives. This is bittersweet for all of us because, of course, we'll miss them. Prom is coming up on May 14th. More details to come. Ever catch yourself wondering why about random things? This week we are introducing a new segment called Did You Know? where Skylar and Layla answer questions about random things. Did you know why Alabama's Crimson Tide actually uses an elephant? Way back in 1930, after watching Old Miss and Alabama go head-to-head -head on the field, sports writer Everett Struper heard the Alabama fans chant, Hold your horses, the elephants are coming. This said, in recognition of the player's massiveness, the elephant's nickname stuck, and the red elephant name was born. Recent graduates Andrew Garcia and Colby LeBlanc just finished boot camp with the Marines. They were able to spend a little bit of time at home before heading back out to finish up their training. During their time off, they visited HJ with their recruiter and we were able to catch an interview. This is Emily with the Hawks Nest and I'm here with some of our Marines today and former graduates of uh, Harden Jefferson High School. So who am I with today? Uh, Private Garcia. I'm Staff Sergeant Barnes. Uh, first class of ball. So you guys just got out of Basics, boot camp, right? Boot camp. Boot camp? All right, well, can you tell us a little bit about Most it? Most of it was pretty easy, except, like, it's more, like, mental instead of physical. I mean, you just got to keep the right mindset, go through it, you know, get through it. What are the benefits of joining? What made you guys decide to join the Marines? It's, I've been told it's the hardest branch to join in the military. Uh, yeah, we do have the reputation of being the hardest branch, but we do, we take pride in returning better citizens back out into the, the civilian world once they get out. Like we teach them leadership skills, management, um, like some courage, self-confidence, stuff like that. And then plus you have all the, the benefits that come with everything else, like free college, uh, you know, you're guaranteed a paycheck, free medical, free dental for, for you and your family. And then, you know, if you do 20 years and retire, you get free medical and free dental for you and your family for the rest of your life. So there are numerous different benefits to joining the Marine Corps and the military as a whole. We're from, uh, from here last year in 2021, so wanted to bring them back, show them, uh, show them off to all their, their teachers <laughs> what, uh, what the Marine Corps did to them. They had a, a pretty warm welcome here, but we just came to talk to some of the students here, spread some information about the Marine Corps so they know the different options and everything that are available to them when, uh, you know, when they graduate or you know, if they want to do it while uh, while they're still in and like join our delayed entry program while they're still seniors, like these two did, and then once they graduate, they're uh, you know they're set. They pretty much go to boot camp shortly after graduation. Well, thank you guys for coming out here with us. This has been Emily with the Hawks Nest. Our cheerleaders are headed off to Fort Worth for their competition this weekend, so we caught up with Miss Rutherford and a few cheerleaders to hear about all that takes. Our school's cheer team is headed to competition soon. We talked with Coach Rutherford to get some insight. The UIL competition is two rounds. Our first round is against, I think, about 43 teams, and top 20 teams make the finals, and it's split up into the three parts. You've got a band chant, fight song, and a cheer. Um, you're judged individually on those, and then Basically, the highest scores make the top 20. And then if you make finals from the top 20, then you basically do it again, but there's another element put into it, and everything has to be under a certain time limit, and then top team wins. I do a lot of watching other teams, getting other videos, watching what the judges have liked in the past, and taking that material and making it our own. I break down, I, I film our girls and watch what our girls are doing and find mistakes that way and go back and try to fix mistakes watching our own film. Um, so it's a lot of research and then it's a lot of just organization and practice. 
We will be leaving on Thursday because we compete Friday morning. So our first competition for prelims is at 916. And then if we make finals, um, that starts about 415 in the afternoon. Um, so we will all leave on Thursday since it's super early Friday morning. We caught up with some seniors too and asked what their thoughts were heading into their very last competition. Oh, I want to cry. <laughs> yeah, it's actually, <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's actually, it's actually very sad. Yeah. Like I didn't think I was gonna be sad until it, it came. No, like once it's over, I'm gonna cry. Like on the mat, I'm gonna cry. No, oh, you can't do that. You have to spear it off. <laughs> okay. Um, I don't, I don't think I'll cry. Well, it'll take me a while. I don't think I'll cry. I'll just be really sad. Like it'll be over, and then I'll be like, oh, it's over. Yeah. We're a lot better this year, I feel like. And, and I feel like our bonds are better. Like, we're yes. all kind of nicer yes. than previous years. And there's, like, there's no drama. Like, there's no drama. We all fun. click. Like, we're all really good with each other. This has been Kendall Promerco and Audie Rogers with The Hawk Nest. So recently, Olivia caught up with Khan Schiff for his senior spotlight. If you don't know Khan, he is the captain of the drum line, and you probably remember him from drumming upside down, blindfolded, in the last pep rally. Khan also is a member of the golf team, and he does UIL writing. He's an interesting guy. Here's Olivia with more. This is Olivia Webb interviewing Khan Schiff for Senior Spotlight. Colin, what are your plans after high school? Well, I plan on going to Baylor to pursue a doctorate in psychology, and then I just want to get somewhere into the medical field after that. Well, that should be good. What activities have you been in in high school? Um, I've been banned as a member of the drum line. I've competed on the high school varsity golf team all four years. Um, th those are the two main things. I've joined a couple clubs and stuff in between. Do you plan on doing any of that in college? Yeah, I, I, I'm going to audition for the bands and I want to walk onto the golf team, but nothing's nailed down. Well, that's good. Do you have any favorite memories from high school? Um, definitely for this last senior game, getting to march out in the hot dog suit. That's something I wanted to do for all of high school and it was nice to finally get to do it. Yeah, that's a good band tradition. Oh, yeah. Do you have any, what is your most embarrassing moment? Definitely passing out after marching in from a football game. Which time? Both of them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Who is your favorite teacher? <laughs> I've had a lot of good teachers, and I, I think it's going to be a two-way tie between Ms. Goolsby and Ms. Thomas. Those are both good, very good teachers. Oh, yeah. Colin, what is your advice to freshmen? Um, I would just say keep a good group of friends and just make sure that you're around them as much as you can and nurture those friendships. I agree. That's some good advice. Uh, thank you, Colin. That is all. This has been Olivia Webb interviewing Colin Schiff for Senior Spotlight. The UIL Academics Competition is in full swing. Ms. Thomas, the UIL Academic Sponsor, explained how this UIL season will work and how far our Hawks have come so far. UIL Academics is similar to sports uh, in the sense of competing against other schools, except instead of just one singular game, we have various um, subject areas. Some of the subject areas include general math, calculator, number sense, ready writing, journalism events, and news writing. So students go in, they go in against other schools, they take their tests, they compete, and then it's graded. Whoever scores the highest gets first place, second, third. You can place one through six because there's probably over 20 people competing in each event, um, and then teams can win also. The UIL team recently competed in a competition and did extremely well. The HJ students on the team placed very high in each of their events. We just came back from our first meet of the season. Um, last year was really weird with COVID. We did didn't have face-to-face -face meets, even state competition was like an online thing, so we were all super excited to get back. We went to Hampshire Finette to compete. There were over 21 schools there. Um, over, only four were our size or smaller. Everybody else were your larger 5A and 6A schools. So I'm really proud of the kids because we went up against Goose Creek and Barbers Hill and Westbrook and those larger schools who have like UIL classes and practice every day. Um, and our kids placed and held their own. The UIL team will compete in a few more meets, hopefully earning a spot at state. We have two more practice meets. We will go to Nederland um, at the end of January, and then we go to PNG at the beginning of February, and then we will then start 
kind of the real competition, which is district um, in March. And then I know we're going to make it to regionals, so that'll be in April. And then hopefully, um, especially my seniors, I'm hoping are competing at state again this year. Last year we had um, a few compete at state and actually Heather Myers placed, which was fabulous. Um, so I'm hoping we do that again. We would love all the support that we can get. We have to compete on Saturdays and we leave at like 6 a.m. So of course we don't expect anyone there to tell us uh, farewell or good luck, but we would appreciate any of the support from my kids, whether it's Landon Morreale or Heather Myers, Charlie Nugent, Thomas Webb. There's several who are competing. We are extremely proud of our UIL academics team so far and we wish them the best of luck as they continue their competition season. This has been Molly Gajewski with the Hawk Nest. That's all, folks. Let's roll into sports with Molly and Tristan. Hawks, it's your sports queen, Molly Gajewski. And Tristan Robinson. And, and here's, here's your sports, sports update. update. The girls' soccer team competed in a tournament last weekend. They won their tournament against Sweeney, Belleville, Magnolia West, and Needville. Coming out on top as first place champs, Nola Boggs was named MVP of the tournament. They played against Bob Hope on Tuesday and won 15-0. They will play on Thursday at Hargrave at 12.30 in a tournament. The boys' soccer team won their game against Hampshire Frenette with a score of 2-0. On Tuesday, they competed against Bob Hope and lost 0-2. The girls' basketball team played Splendor on Tuesday and won with a score of 104-24. They will play on Friday against Livingston at 5.40 p.m. and they will play another game Tuesday against Hampshire Frenette at 7 p.m. Congratulations to senior Ashlyn Jackson for being a nominee for the 2022 McDonald's All-American Game. The boys basketball team played Shepherd on Friday and won with a score of 95 to 22. They played Splendora on Tuesday and won with a score of 84 to 28. And they'll play an away game at Liberty on Tuesday at 7. I'm here with point guard Micah Brown after an 84 to 28 win over Splendora. Uh, what are your thoughts on this complete uh, domination? Uh, both teams fought hard. We just fought harder. Uh, turned up the defense. Got the pressure early uh, and just never let up. It just seems like you guys were the most dominant team tonight. Uh, Splendor just didn't come ready to play, or they're just not very good. Uh, we definitely we definitely dominated on both sides of the ball. And what can I say? We just we just played good basketball all around. That's all I can say. What can you say to Liberty? Uh, you're next. Um, that's a wrap. <laughs> Make sure to go out and spoil your Hawks. And here's Amber with the weather. Welcome back to the weekend weather with Amber. The next week will be mostly sunny with highs in the 60s and lows in the 40s. This weekend will be partly cloudy. Saturday will be 62 degrees, dropping to around 41 degrees at night. Sunday will be a bit colder with a high of 54 and a low of 39. Perfect weather for a nice sweater and hanging out with friends. MLK Day is Monday. It's a school holiday. Civil rights leader Dr. Martin Luther King has been remembered for his I Have a Dream speech and also for his civil rights movement. We now remember him on the third Monday of January. And that's all for today. Enjoy your long weekend. And remember, it's a great day to be a hawk.